What's going on folks? We're coming to you today from Stu's Garage and today what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my suspension. So an update for those of you who don't watch all of my videos. Um, this is a 1990 Fox Body Mustang um, underneath the car which you're not going to really be able to see. Um, I've replaced the solid live axle with a independent Cobra rear suspension from an 03 Cobra. Um, so for those of you all who don't know what that is, these cars come with one long solid axle that wobbles back and forth and now I have control arms on both sides, um, half shafts for my axles and things like that, more like a modern car and uh, actually more like the S550 Mustangs. So um, that's what's going on underneath the car and in the back here you see I've got more suspension back here. This is what's known as a cantilever suspension setup because we've got the cantilevers here. Some people call these rocker arms. Um, it's also called a push rod suspension because we've got push rods right here. Um, so the way this differs from a stock suspension is um, I'll do a little bit of engineering explained over here. All right, so on a stock suspension, and this is gonna be a very crude picture. Um, we'll say this is your diff here and these are your axles which doesn't really matter for this demonstration and then somewhere on your suspension you've got your control arms here and you've got your wheel here you got a wheel here um, and then let's just say you've got your spring here and your spring mounts to the body you've got a spring here and that also contacts the body and then you've got a strut here and you've also got a strut here. The majority of cars are set up this way, one way or another. Um, some cars, the strut mounts inside of a strut tower um, in the trunk. Some cars, the strut mounts directly to the body, but um, the majority of cars that you see are configured like this in the rear. You have your strut and you have the spring outside the strut. So what I've done is I've eliminated the spring from the equation, so there's no more spring sitting in there and I've taken my strut so the strut you know has a piston that goes up and down I've eliminated the strut and now instead of a strut I've got a solid push rod that connects to a pivot point that's roughly what it is and uh, my pivot point connects to a spring and goes that way and it's the same thing on the other side so now when I hit a bump the push rod pushes up on that, the pivot point goes that way, and it compresses the spring that way. So that in a nutshell is how it works, and uh, that's how I constructed it. So anyways, back to the car. So these are the push rod. These go directly down to the control arms. So anyways, um, there's my brief overview of the suspension and how it works. Um, if you want to know more, click the link down below where you see how I actually installed this thing. Now the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I actually got a lot of people asking me why did I do it, which was uh, a little bit bewildering to me at first because I mean, you know, why do we do all these modifications to our cars anyways? They don't need it, they work perfectly fine from the factory. Um, it was kind of a misinterpretation on my part of the questions. A lot of people were just kind of curious as to, you know, why I chose to do it, what is this suspension doing for me? and uh, what are the advantages of, of this setup. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna discuss why I chose to do this setup and what advantages it gives. Um, another question people are asking me, oh, well, how does the car feel with the new suspension? So I'll talk about that a little bit as well. So first up, why did I do this? Um, the reason why I did this is because, as I said, I'm running a stock Cobra IRS on here. It's actually upgraded, but suspension wise, it was stock. So I had those springs on the car um, and I had struts, which I don't know where they are right now, but those are actually an old set of struts that I had on here. They're just OEM struts and shocks. Um, how did the car handle before? The car handled amazing before. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. The problem is um, because this car sits so wide because of my custom suspension and angle kits and everything, this car is actually about six inches wider than um, you know what a Fox body comes from the factory. It's about six inches wider, and my wheelbase um, is about six is, is is about two inches longer. So 
I've done a lot of stuff to this car. The car sits so wide now, um, I had to put these fender flares on it. And I street drive this car. So the thing is, on these Maryland roads, um, you know, you hit a pothole or you hit a bump or you hit a dip or something. And um, I, I just didn't have enough clearance here. My tires were hitting my fender flares and it was breaking my fender flares. And these things are like $100 a piece. And I just don't have money to keep throwing away like that. And I don't want my car to be raggedy. So I'd hit bumps, I would smell smoke in the car and my fender flares would be broken. And I got really sick of that. So the suspension was too soft in the rear. The car rode great, it handled great, but it was just too soft in the rear. Um, now, why didn't I just go with some stiffer springs um, or regular coilover setup? I didn't go with stiffer springs because these are actually aftermarket springs, so no, they're not stock. Um, these are Steeda springs. However, I cannot find any information about these springs. I have no idea what the spring rate is on those things. And on top of that, there's very, very few choices for suspension upgrades for a Cobra IRS. So how can you upgrade or get a stiffer spring from a spring that you don't even know what it is in the first place? So basically with me not knowing what those are, my only option was to go with a coilover setup where I could interchange the springs, um, set my dampening and things like that in order to get my wheel travel and everything dialed in. But as with everything I've done on this car, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I could slap a set of coilovers on there and be done with it, or I could re reinvent the wheel. So I got this idea from somebody. Um, I had actually seen his car about two years prior to um, actually meeting him and becoming friends with him, uh, my buddy Ivan. Um, and, uh, you know, I talked with him about it and I said, hey, look, you know, I really basically want to copy your setup. You know, do you have any advice for me? So he helped me out and he made these parts for me, but that's getting off topic from the video. Basically, I needed to change my setup. That's why I changed it. And I decided to do this because I wanted to. Um, I wanted to challenge myself for one. Um, it looked like something that would be a kind of a fun project and a challenge. Um, it looked like it was doable and it was really cool. So I did it for the cool factor. I did it for the fun factor. And just to be doing something, you know, I'm keeping busy. Uh, this car has kept me plenty busy for the two years that I've been spending building it. So this is just another cool modification that I wanted to do uh, in a different way just to really see if I could and, and uh, you know, just to turn a few heads and everything. So um, other than that, my reasoning for doing it is because I hate going underneath the car for anything. I don't like crawling on my back on this floor getting stuck by things. I don't like things falling in my eyes. I hate working underneath the car. So for me, having an adjustable suspension that I can just pop the trunk and adjust as I see fit is a huge advantage. Um, lastly, I like the fact that with the suspension being inside the car, it's not exposed to the elements. So the number one destroyer of shocks and struts is dust, moisture, and dirt. Um, as you can see, these shafts right here, they go down into the piston and all of that stuff. When you get dirt in there, it messes up the seals and that's what causes blown shocks over time. So when you have your struts and shocks and everything like that, and they come with these type of things on them and they have dust boots, you really want to make sure that your dust boots are in good condition because that's what's saving your shocks from getting destroyed. All it takes is, you know, a good winter or running through a pile of mud or dirt, you know, just general daily driving. And that's enough to basically do damage to your shock that's, that's gonna kill it over time prematurely. So I liked having the suspension inside the car where it's just gonna stay nice and clean, clean and protected from the elements. Um, adjustability wise, I can adjust my height here. I can adjust my height here. So I have a lot of height adjustment here. I mean, I'm pretty much dialed in at this point. I don't need to do any height adjustments, but I could adjust it if I wanted to. And, um, I can also adjust, um, now these, um, these rocker arms aren't really designed to be adjustable, but there are examples of push rod suspensions where you actually have different pickup points. And depending on where you connect these things, it actually changes the, um, your, your effective spring rate. So all of that adjustability is really cool. Now further advantages that you would have with a push rod style suspension, um, would be reduction of unsprung mass. Now, I know if you've ever read a car article or you know anything dealing with cars and engineering, people kind of uh, throw that term around a lot. What does that actually mean? 
Unsprung mass is basically any weight on the car that is not support, supported by your suspension. So your wheels are unsprung mass, your, tens, your, your wheels are unsprung mass, your tires are unsprung mass, your brakes, um, anything that's not held up by your shocks front and rear. Um, so by moving these giant heavy shocks, you know, into the car, the shocks are actually supporting their own weight. Um, you know, moving all that suspension inside the car, you have less unsprung mass. You put more load on the suspension than on your wheels and stuff where your suspension can't control what that weight is doing. So in that aspect, I have reduced unsprung mass. Um, weight reduction is a possibility with this. Honestly, I think I probably came out about even, um, again, these springs right here are huge. They're very heavy. They're solid pieces of metal. Um, the hardware that I put back into here, uh, it looks a lot bigger than it is, but you know, my hand against these, uh, these rocker arms, you can see that these rocker arms are actually not as large as they look, even though they're cut out of steel. Um, they're not very heavy. Um, honestly, if I gained any weight, man, I, I'd be shocked if I, if I gained 10 pounds with this setup just because of the stuff that came out of the car and what I replaced it with. So, um, weight is not really an issue. Now the last big question that uh, people have been asking me is, oh man, you know, how does the car handle with the new suspension? And uh, that's a really difficult question to answer because um, it's not just, uh, honestly, I don't feel as though the push rod setup has contributed anything to my handling, the push rod setup itself. Um, Chelsea Denofa himself actually drove this car um, at a drift event and he told me that this car drove better than Vaughn Gittin's independent rear suspension Fox body which to me is very high praise. Um, for those of you all who don't know who Vaughn Gittin and Chelsea Denofa are, um, I'll put a picture of their cars but they're, they're basically top guys in the industry and um, just for me driving the car by myself. Um, I know that this car handled amazing the way it was in its previous configuration and there, there was really very little to be desired as far as my rear suspension except for the unfortunate fact that my wheels were hitting my fender flares um, and I did this to make it stiffer. So by me making this stiffer, um, the car feels fine going down the road, you know, it drives good and everything. Um, the ride quality is different but I mean I wouldn't necessarily call it better or worse. Um, unfortunately, I do believe that I have reduced the amount of grip that this car gets, um, which means that when I'm drifting, I can't actually get as much speed as I would normally get. So in drift, you actually do need traction, even though you're making your car slide, you do need traction in order to have more car control. Um, with me having a stiffer suspension in the rear, I don't get as much forward traction which means that I spin more and I don't get as much acceleration for, for the amount that I'm spinning. Um, so my car is actually a little bit slower at the track. It's not a big deal for me because I'm not competitive. Um, it's a give and take. I chose to have a stiffer suspension because it's more important to me to have a car that's not self-destructing than to have a car that's faster at a drift track and an event that's not timed anyways and I'm not competing. So I, I, I really don't mind the car being a little bit slower. Um, it's very easy to control. Um, I do feel like the car is easier to control than I remember, but then again, it's been a year since I've drifted this thing and, uh, it's just, it's, it's a really, really difficult comparison to make. So to answer the question, how does it feel with the new suspension? Honestly, the car feels great. I can't necessarily say whether it feels better or worse. And, um, I would definitely say that the cantilever setup itself, <laughs> may or may not be contributing to the overall feel of the car. The biggest, the biggest factor that's changed on this car is, is my struts and springs. I've, I've gone with a much stiffer spring in the back. So that's, that's really what's determining the behavior of this car. So um, hopefully I've answered you guys' questions as to why I've done it, how the car feels and things like that. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I definitely always try to read all of my comments and answer any questions that you guys have. Um, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.